Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage. We are working back on the, as we're calling it right now, <laughs> jalopy shop truck. So this is the Roadster pickup body and uh, project that we got out of Texas when we bought uh, an estate of Model A parts and we basically sold everything off and we have this cool little Roadster pickup to play with um, in the end. So um, in the last video, we kind of just got some stuff swapped around and got the body, the pieces that we wanted to keep put together. So we got the new frame, um, or better frame, uh, blew the body all out, set it down on the frame. We just kind of played around mocking it up with some tires and wheels and different stuff like that. So what we're gonna work on in this video is trying to get this thing rolling under um, its own or the correct wheels and tires on this um, on this thing. So all these projects, I always try and as quick as possible, get the vehicle rolling, number one, and then number two, moving, especially when it's a bigger car. Now this car is pretty small, it's easy to roll around, but it is a pain in the butt. Right now we have jack stands under and it's very sketchy to even roll it out from underneath of the lift. So uh, we're gonna work on getting a drop axle put together. I have an old drop axle I grabbed off the wall already, um, putting that together, heating and bending the spindles, all the normal stuff with setting up a uh, traditional front end using old Ford parts. And then in the back, we're gonna get, uh, we're partnering with Old Yankee Speedco, uh, and they are sending us a set of spring perches for the back that we can put on a later rear, um, so we can get an, a Model A type spring on a later, like uh, 42, 48 rear, get it all rolled underneath, and hopefully we get uh, some tires for the front so we can get this thing sat down and looking how it's going to look, which is gonna be really fun. So let's get started.
be like this. There you go. So we got the front suspension underneath, got those front tires mounted up, and uh, it is looking really, really cool. We got the rear tires are back, um, back there that I put some 750-16s or 750s on the 16-inch wheels, but um, it is looking really cool. I'm really happy with the drop on this is, is nice. It's got the front end down about where we want it. You can see the split wishbones are hitting back around the A pillar, which is, uh, in my opinion, is preferable if you can get it. Obviously, the further back is, is better, the more stable it is. But if you can get it right around that A pillar line, I think that's what looks really, really nice or just in front of the A pillar. So they're landing right where we want. Those wishbones were cut off, kind of crude, like we got them from our friend Pete out of his uh, quote unquote junk pile if you will and uh, I had to cut them back a little more I was a little worried they were gonna be short but they actually look like they will work perfect so we still have the rear mocked up you can see it's got about the that's kind of the stance we're going for or the the ride height if you will um, I have a later rate here rear here um, I realized that we were completely out of V8 banjo rears and I'm like scrambling to find one uh, my buddy Jamie had one laying around that I guess he offered to me last summer and at that point I had a ton of rears laying around and I said nah I don't even want that thing for free so he had an ad up on Facebook for like you know 50 bucks or something he just wanted out of his driveway and I I called him and he's like you turn this thing down so <laughs> anyways I went and got it um, and uh, we had it at the warehouse Mike brought it back so what we're gonna be doing is this is a spring I got from our friend Ed that is in uh, New York and um, he had this in his junk pile. This was off one of his dad's old hot rods or race cars. It's a T-spring that's been um, like reshaped for a later rear. So they actually kind of way they bend it out, it actually fits a later rear like this. So um, we're gonna take all the stuff we don't need off of this. So we're gonna be putting a spring over design. So we're gonna be using the old Yankee um, perches, which actually go here. And we're gonna be getting, taking this rear spring off cutting the rear perches off because we don't need them and then getting the new perches on with this spring it should get it sitting pretty cool and of course i gotta take all the tor torque tube bs off and axe or drive shaft off so we can get it rolled underneath there so i got a bunch of dirty work to do again <laughs>
right, so since this is kind of like a basic um, build here, quote unquote, for an AV8 type build, uh, some of the stuff we've covered before, but I'm going to just touch on it throughout this whole build just to remind anybody or new people to our channel. Um, so a couple things, when you're taking these banjo rears apart, this is all stuff that I struggled with first couple times I did this, and now that you know, it's really simple. So number one, uh, you saw I loosened those torque tube bolts back there. You really can't get a, a socket on them. It's kind of hard to get a socket on, so you usually use open-ended wrench, and you can break them free, um, or a sh real thin uh, closed end wrench sometimes can fit. So anyway, it's got that off, but if you're doing this and you loosen those bolts and the torque tube's kind of loose but it won't slide off, uh, what actually happens is up front here, this is the speedo gear. Um, the speedo gear slides on, there's a thrust washer. Um, this torque tube had been taken apart and kind of just quickly put back together. So what they're supposed to be, like right here you can see it, there's a little groove cut in there and all of this stuff needs to slide on and oops and there's a circuit that basically goes on there and you cannot slide the torque tube off unless you take that circuit off pull the gear out all that stuff you pull all those pieces out and um, the stress washer of course it's against the bearing um, so that's in there so once you get this off with the circuit then you can slide the torque tube off and I don't care how hard you bang, that little wire clip is a lot stronger than you think. So make sure you um, check that. Other thing is now to take the drive shaft off on these later rears, they have this like adapter, spline adapter piece, which I've shown in other videos you can use when you're shortening the torque tube. I'm sorry, shortening the drive shaft, you can use this piece to your advantage. Um, but what there is is if it's never been apart before, there is rivets there and there. And what you need to do is actually drill the head of those rivets on both sides out, grind them smooth and then drill them out. And you have to drill pretty far down because this is riveted, um, that the mushroom, the head mushroom is pretty far. So you need to do that. And then you can drive them out with a punch. Then you can take the drive shaft off of the rear. We just want to get all that nonsense off so we can get the, the rear end rolled underneath of the car for now. So uh, a couple little tricks when you're taking these apart that, um, I wasted hours figuring out and uh, until I, I found out the hard way. So uh, I'm going to get this torque tube or uh, the drive shaft off, uh, off, and um, and then we can start getting it's this thing cleaned up and hopefully get our new perches on it back and then uh, start cleaning that spring up there to get that put on.
was a huge pain in the butt to do by myself. Uh, everything went pretty smoothly in the beginning, taking it apart and getting everything painted. But when we went to go and put everything back together, uh, I was struggling very, very badly. But I was very determined to get this finished today. Um, the other guys in the shop were out today, but I still wanted to get this thing built, uh, kind of assembled like it is. And I really should have waited for some help because putting the spring back together and holding the, everything on the jack stands and rolling it under, under the truck was a huge nightmare to do by myself. To be completely honest, I really shouldn't have done it. I, you know, it was a little unsafe doing that by myself, but looking at the bright side of things, I got it together. It rolls now. Uh, it's sitting pretty darn cool. Uh, it sits a little high in the rear, um, I think, but that's also kind of the uh, look we're going for for, for this uh, build. And uh, I think it should work out pretty good. Worst case, I can take a leaf or two out, but uh, by the time we put some wood in the bed, put a gas tank back there, add a little bit of weight to the back of the truck, I think it's going to drop down um, quite a bit, or not quite a bit, but at least an inch or so, which will be uh, pretty good. So uh, overall, I think it's looking pretty cool. I'm really psyched that um, we've pretty much used almost no, uh, or we bought almost no parts um, other than the front tires that I bought. Pretty much everything else I had laying around. Now I did have to purchase some wood blocks and different stuff like that, but to get to this point where we're at was really just pulling parts out of the uh, stash that I have. And this is why I can't stress enough in all these videos when I talk about when we go on these adventures and everything and spot meets, that is the fun of doing all of this, is collecting parts for a build that you will do someday. And today is someday for some of these parts and it's really awesome. So uh, really psyched on how this came together. Can't wait to start working on getting the engine running and then eventually getting the engine in this thing. Get all bolted up. That's gonna be the next step that's gonna really transform this truck and make it look like a cool hot rod shop truck runner. So thank you guys for following along, really appreciate it. Let me know what you think of the shop truck and how it's sitting down below in the comments. Thanks a lot guys, catch you later. Mm -hmm.